Hey guys, it's Lighty here, and today I am with Xavier Man 117 Hi! And today's episode, we are going to be doing basically a discussion on the new free-to-play game, Warframe. We're going to be looking at both the positives and the negatives of this game. I'm the negatives. And, and I'm the positives. And basically what we are going to be doing is having our own personal opinions. Yes, we are going to be talking to each other about what we think about this game. Now, before we go, I should probably interject here and say, this is our opinions and should not be determined on whether or not you like the game or hate the game or whether you get it. Exactly. Now, I think I'll start off with a few positive notes. Now, I personally really like the game. I've played about 200 hours in the game. I've put probably close to about $200 into the game. And one of the greatest aspects about this game that I love is it's space ninjas. Where yeah. can you go wrong with that? Yeah, I can't deny that. I can't deny that the whole space ninja theme really works for the game. It really does. And the fact that the graphics of the game itself, for a free-to-play, blew me away when I first opened the game. I've got to agree there. Got to, I have to say, yeah. Now, there are also a lot of other great facts about this game. Fact number one. You can get every single item in the game without paying a single cent. Mm. I have to interject here, however, and say, while this is true, and not just technically true, this is true, doing anything without paying a cent does, in fact, take a lot more effort. But if you're willing to put the effort in, I suppose it's an okay thing to do. Mm. And that is completely true, what Simon just said there. Basically, if you put money into the game, it doesn't give you items that other people can't get, except for, say, a special character called Excalibur Prime. Only funders can get this character. And funders are basically people who put about $150 into the game at once. Mm. That's, a, that's a fair enough to reward to actually give people to say, if you want to help get our game off the ground and help us getting going, we'll give you a special character. But that, I, I like that aspect where they try and reward the people who have put their own money into the game without making it sort of too exclusive. Exactly. So basically, on top of the fact that the graphics are great and, well, you can get every single item in the game without paying a cent, there is also the gameplay. You can run up wars, you can be a complete and utter ninja like you would expect in a simple ninja game. Space ninja game, I should say. But on top of that, the mobs that you face. There are three different factions that you face. Each faction you can easily recognize. They are not the same copies repasted with a different color. They are completely different. For instance, you have the Grinnyabyss. They seem to be more of the industrial type fellas, you know, they have their base, uh, what is it, gunpowder weapons, all that sort of stuff, they have explosions and that, and then you have the corpus. Now the corpus are more of, how would I put this, manufacturing company is how I would probably put them, they're into robotics, so when you face the corpus, they actually have less health and stuff as the Grinia do, however the corpus have shields, they have lasers, they have everything you would think uh, basically a high-tech company would have. Now, the third faction that you face is the infested. I'll put it plain and simple. Think of the massive hordes you face in any Halo game that has the Flood. Mm, the infested is basically just Space Ninja version of the Flood. It really is. They are quite intense to fight. For instance, they just mob you and then they just keep knocking you around and stuff like that. However, each faction has a weakness. I've already mentioned the Corpus have less health. The Grinier have armor, and you, this then leads me into the modding of the game. You can mod so much in this game. You can put so many mods and stuff onto your weapons. You level your weapons up as you level up your characters as well. And then on top of that, you can actually mod the mods. Well, not so much mod the mods. You upgrade the mods. But before I ramble on for too much longer, I'm going to let Simon say a few words. Mm, thank you very much, Slidey. Now, as most people will be aware, no game is without flaw. Every single good game that has ever been out has always had its downs, its, you know, its ups as well as its downs, and some of them just really suck. Now, I will agree that Warframe is 
on average, a good game. It's definitely a game that, since it's free, it's worth trying, but there are a couple of things that you should keep in mind. The game isn't... Um, it's stable enough, but there are always a couple of bugs here and there. There come a couple of times when you might run into problems in terms of... Especially when it comes to the graphics. If your rig isn't quite up to par, a lot of the battles that you'll get into can actually cause a significant frame rate loss. I don't have the best rig, and I noticed that when I had my settings on high, walking into a room full of corpus or grenier or infested, especially infested, can really cause your FPS to just tank down there. And I'm not just going to bitch about the technical aspects, because that's not the only issues this game has. It is pretty good, as I said. But it also has a couple of issues with the gameplay. While the gameplay is, and Lighty will certainly back me up here, very interesting and very varied at the start, it, the varied uh, nature that it actually has kind of becomes its weakness at the end because you fight the same three enemies in the same level which is essentially reused and really you're just fighting the same missions over and over again. You, you can't really deny that it does kind of feel like it's reusing assets later. Mm. Well, now as I completely agree with Simon's point there about having the maps replay themselves and stuff like that, Basically, what the maps are is they are just randomly generated tiles that the devs and stuff have created for that certain faction. But the upside of this is that this game is still in beta. It is constantly being updated. In fact, it is, it's, um, its community is so well connected with the devs that if you become a founder, now this is, you have to put money in. If you become a founder, they actually grant you access to a special chat channel, which can be accessed anywhere in the game, in the menus, whilst you're playing the game. And it is called the council chat. Now what this chat is, is basically you go in there and you can ask questions and you've obviously got the players that know what they're talking about because they've put money into the game. But not only that, you also have the devs come in and sit on that channel so you can ask them any questions you want, they will answer them. You can point out any bugs you want and they will look into them. Now, you might now think, well, you have to pay money to talk to the devs. That is not true. They will sit on the region chat as well. However, I have noticed that they tend to not sit on the region chat as much because they get a lot more, how to put this, stupid questions thrown at them. I suppose you could say that those people who have put a significant amount of money into the game actually get a priority over those who haven't. Yes, that is true. That is true. So to actually uh, go back and talk about the more negative aspects of the game, and there's really not much more I can say, because as you said, it is in beta, and a lot of its stuff can be forgiven for that. However, back to the sort of money spending aspect of the game as you said earlier everything in the game can be bought i mean so can be earned without paying a single in-game cent but the problem is that the fact that people can pay real world money to get a shortcut sort of feels like or at least felt to me when i played it like it was in your face every step of the way some guns just can't be bought and need to be made and that takes a lot of time and effort and grinding and even when you're making them you even get the opportunity to spend real world cash to shortcut it it just kind of feels like the opportunity to spend money is sort of in your face a little bit here and there not always but it is certainly there mm. well I, I definitely see your point there and that is true <laughs> It was probably a bit more in your face than it will be to other members because you're playing with me and Vit who had actually put money into the game. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, I definitely see that point there and it is a bit in your face. Like for just to give the viewers a bit of an understanding of um, what the time frame it is to build something. Say if I wanted to build a new character, what I have to do is I have to go into the market and use my credits. Now, credits is basically the money you earn from doing missions and stuff. If you're familiar with Planet Side 2, it's the equivalent of certs. Yes, well, there you go. Now, basically, what you have to do is you go into the market and you have to buy a blueprint for your new character. And then on top of that, you have to figure out which planet actually holds more blueprints for the blueprint you just got. For instance... When you buy that blueprint out of the market, it will then give you a list of things to collect. And it will be such as, if I just use a name of a um, character right now, just use shock. It will then ask you to go off and get a shock chassis, a shock helmet, a shock system, etc., etc., etc. So you actually got to get the parts, the actual pieces of the uh, character's armor. 
But to get these pieces, you need to find blueprints of bosses. Now, there is one problem here that um, Simon might not actually know about yet because it's come out in one of the most recent updates and he's been a bit away behind, from this game for a bit. A bit. behind in yeah. the game. Now, what they have recently done, this was to basically reduce the amount of blueprint farming off the first boss. Because basically the first boss dropped the blueprints of a unique sword that you cannot buy. You have to earn it. Now, there are other weapons in this game where you can't buy them with platinum or, so, or credits or anything like that. You have to actually get the blueprint and build it. But anyway, they put this system into place which basically made it the more you fight a boss the less chance you get of it dropping an item the problem with this is when you are say looking for the blueprints to create your new character you tend to get all the stuff that you need except for one and then by the time you've gone to the last one because you have fought that boss so often you will find yourself doing about, I think, the longest person, well, the person who had the most unlucky run, he did about 120 runs of the boss before Ouch. he finally got the piece he needed. Oh, that sounds a bit excessive. So there is that element of people need to sort of quote-unquote, and I don't like using this word, I only use it in very rare circumstances, they need to grind to actually get the items they sort of want. And that's, that is a bit of a downside with any free-to-play game, of course. You need to put in that amount of real-world effort to actually get these sort of items. Mm, it is true. But to be honest, after I've put money into the game, I've bought characters in that straight out, so I didn't have to grind for them in that. But to be honest, to me, it actually took a lot away from the game. I have bought the majority of my characters. I own every single character in the game plus most of the weapons. However, I've bought maybe three quarters of those characters and built the rest. I had more fun building the characters than I have done in anything else because it gave me an objective in this game. Mm, that's definitely something you need to find in the game. If you're actually looking towards this game, and it's certainly a game that I would recommend trying, even though I'm the person here pointing out the negatives, because it's free, it's certainly worth trying. You need to find an objective and you need to find what you want to do in this game because this game is terrible when it comes to actually giving you a sort of direction of where you want to go. If you think that your entire objection, sorry, uh, objective sorry, is to actually get all the good stuff, you can just buy it, and then where are you from there? So you need to go in there and actually know what you want to do, and that's something that I think could be improved in the game. There's no end game that I'm aware of. There's nothing to really work towards. No, there's not at the moment. Mm, it is still in beta, so that is sort of a... Uh, something that we can forgive it for. So I'm pretty sure that uh, unless you actually have anything else you want to bring up about the game, I'm pretty sure we've covered everything here. Mm. Well, you might want to talk a little bit about the story of the game. Oh yes, definitely. Um, that is definitely a, uh, a drawback to the game. The game seems to have very interesting lore, and when you actually look at how the characters are made, how they are designed, the art style behind them, as well as the story that fits with this art style, it feels like there just isn't enough lore. I mean... It's, it's there, but it's just it's not in-game. You, you understand what the protagonists are, but you don't really understand why they're fighting. And even if you knew why, you just don't really feel it. It, it don't, doesn't really resonate with you, and that's something that really needs to be integrated into the game. More of a storytelling experience. Mm. I am sad to say I do have to agree with some here. Like, I personally like games that have a lot of story. This game doesn't. Yes. It, it just... It doesn't. It's, it, it's kind of sad. You, you can go into the forums and that and look up the story, but even then, it's extremely vague. Basically, the only idea that I've gotten out of it is that you're playing as these people called the Tenno, and in my ter interpretation, they are humans. Hmm. And of then course, that's very vague. Yes. And then the Grinier want to kill the Tenos because the Grinier are basically clones. Mm, let's not spoil and it too much, of course. No. Um, well, the thing is, none of this is explained in the game. Oh, okay, then fair enough. Carry on. Yes, so basically the Grinier are clones, and then they want to kill the Tenno because the Grinier's life force is basically depleting, and they need the life force of a Tenno to replenish themselves. 
Now, to me, this is pretty silly because what are you going to do once all the tenor are dead? Yeah, it's it is very. It seems very vague and very silly. It's mm. it's not a it's not a strong point of the game. Definitely not. It's not. Yes. And then the corpus. Don't know what they are. <laughs> Don't know where they came from. Don't know why the hell they're fighting the Grinia and the Tenno. And you're not given a reason to care. <laughs> Pretty much, you just kill them. And um, the Infested, the only story that I've seen or heard about them is that they were a weapon created by the Tenno to kill something. You're not told what, but just something. Uh, but, um, yeah. I, I, I guess I, that was the um, negative part of my point <laughs> yeah i've already covered so, um, the positive part just all the I'll, things i pointed out yeah yeah definitely and i am going to finish this up with a quick jump back to the grinding of the blueprints now i did mention that the more you fight a boss the less chance you have however there is a fix to this they well not they but you can actually if you have noticed that your chances of getting the blueprints are extremely low, that you're doing run after run after run and getting nothing, you can actually invite a friend. Well, not invite a friend. Get a friend to host a game. Invite you into it. And make sure this friend hasn't played this boss over and over and over and over and over. And then you can go fight the boss together and you let your friend get the final kill. Now, what this will actually do is then base the drop chance on his chance instead of yours. Oh, that's actually rather clever. You know, we completely spaced on the co-op aspect of the game. We completely we forgot did. about that. So I think we that that'll probably be my positive in the negatives. The whole fact is this entire game, uh, everything we just mentioned, can be played with up to four people, and that's just fantastic that you can bring your friends along and have a Grenier, Corpus, Infested, Slicing Adventure with your friends. And the addition of co-op drastically improves the uh, game in my books. Oh, most definitely. And the thing is, you can, and I stress this out so much because there are so many players that I've seen that come into the game and they just run through and kill everything. Well, if they don't run through and kill everything, then they just run past everything. But you can, you can play this as an extremely functional team. As Simon probably knows when he played with me, Vit, and Jens, basically, the high damages were me and Jens. And then you got Simon, who runs around and helps out because he's actually a lower level than us because, as we mentioned before, he fell behind a bit. But what Vit has, he plays as a character called Loki. And Loki can put out a decoy. Now, what this will actually do is it brings all the mobs together and then me and Jens run in and clear out the room. Mm. There is that great element of team strategy and working together here. But I feel that we could probably talk about all this... Um, in depth for a long time. I think we've pretty much covered everything we wanted to talk about about this game. Yeah, I think we pretty much have. Now, if you guys have any questions that you would like any of us, well, when I say us, I mean me or Simon, to answer, or if you think we missed out on something, then leave a comment and we'll get straight back to you as soon as we can. If you'd like to try out the game, the link to the website will be in the description, but it is also available on Steam, so feel free to Google, sorry, not Google, search for Warframe on Steam and check it out. It is free to play, so it's definitely worth trying at the very least. Definitely. Well, put it this way. If you're not paying money for the game, why not give it a shot? Why not? Why not? Yeah. And we'll leave you at that one. So, this is me signing off. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.